Man, look how close we are to having a complete engine, huh? Well, I mean, except for the fact that the cylinder heads aren't bolted down, the oil pan's not on for good, this only has four bolts locating it, that needs to come back off, the intake's just sitting here. We're getting pretty close, huh? Okay, so, well, despite the fact that nothing is, you know, truly bolted, bolted down for good, we are, in fact, actually getting very close. The oil pan, believe it or not, can go on just as soon as I get the water pump and the gasket for this bad boy, because you have to get the timing cover on permanently before you can put the oil pan on permanently, because, well, it's, it's a part of the oil pan gasket. So, that being said, that means I have all the pistons in, I have the crank in, you know, all the bearings, everything down below is buttoned up. The oil, well, let me just show you. Let's start by removing the actual intake here for a second, followed by the cylinder heads. Oh yeah, that's right. I got studs. Head studs. Pretty cool, huh? And the other one. We'll rotate this bad boy around. Take off the few nuts I have holding it on here, just for mock it. Then the whole thing will come right off and check all of that out. Now, as you can see, we have a windage tray and a crank scraper. Now, the crank scraper I've already siliconed down. I siliconed it down and then I bolted it down so that it cured so that's not gonna leak i got a really nice bead of silicone squishing all the way down so that's gonna you know not leak oil hopefully we got a windage tray on to try to help with the windage obviously oil pumps on everything is in all the it's a short block we actually have a short block now check out these pistons okay i know i know i didn't get the pistons fully cleaned but they're clean enough for our purposes. The only thing that's going to affect is the looks. And, well, frankly, you're not going to be able to see it inside the motor. So, you know, they're good enough. Things to note, the notch of the pistons is towards the back of the block. What does that mean? That means we swapped them bank to bank. Uh, reversing the piston offset. Yeah, it's supposed to improve angularity and this and that. And there's a lot of theories behind it. A lot of people say it does nothing. A lot of people say it does something. I say, well, if it does something, good. If it does nothing, well, then it didn't do anything. So, I mean, yeah, it's not like it affected it negatively. Uh, supposedly, you're supposed to hear more piston slap. A lot of people say you don't. We're just going to try it out because I'm curious and I want to know. What else? The piston rings, okay? They're all gapped, obviously, because they're in the block. I gapped the top ring 30 thousandths, second ring 35 thousandths, bigger than the top ring, so it doesn't trap gases in between the two rings and causes a ring flutter. Uh, I gapped them so large of a ring gap because we're running nitrous. Now, they're big even for nitrous, but that's because these are hyper eutectic pistons. They're not forged pistons, so I want plenty of ring gap because between ring gap and budding, you know, the two ring, the ring gap coming together, between that and detonation, these things are brittle on nitrous. So I want to eliminate one of them for sure. We just got to make sure we don't detonate these things and they'll be fine on nitrous. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, piston valve clearance. We are golden. These things have massive uh, valve reliefs in them, so but no problems at all. Finally, that's been the biggest issue we've had. Problem solved. Uh, head studs. We have head studs in this block. Why? Two reasons. One, because they're not ARPs, so that means they're fairly affordable. Uh, they're, you know, you really can't mess up a head stud. It, yeah, they're not ARPs, but I have very, you know, little doubt that they're going to do the job just fine. Uh, number two, because we're running nitrous and head studs are a little bit 
you know, they clamp down just a little bit easier, a little bit, hold it a little bit better. So between those two reasons, affordability and the fact we're running nitrous, we have head studs. Oh, I, I guess number three, they look cool. So, you know, that that's, you know, beside the point. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, plasma molly rings, uh, 400 uh, grit or finish hone, whatever. That's about it. Okay, so the valve train on this bad boy. We have roller rockers. Check those out. Pretty fancy ones, too. Uh, well, concept design, anyway. They got these adjustable nuts and uh, stuff on the back to adjust the push rod. And uh, 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 these are pedestal mount. Uh, let's put that out of the way. They're pedestal mount rockers. This really just kind of eases the adjustability of getting the geometry correct. Yeah, this little addition right here. Because otherwise you got to mess around with shims and uh, the push rod length has to be exact and perfect. And it, it's, it's a pain in the ass. These just make life a lot easier. Uh, now, not everything is glorious about them. They came with the wrong size bolt to stick through they came with metric size bolts well this is not metric we're in america so this is a 5 16 by 18 uh thread pattern so what i had to do is i had to go and find grade 8 hardware that will work and i did they are a quarter of an inch longer than the ones that were supplied but they still work in those heads so you know what a quarter inch more thread engagement with the cylinder head I'm good with that. So that's what's going on with the valve train so far. I still have to check for push rod length and order up a set of nicer push rods. But, you know, this, this, all right, m m moving on to nitrous. Now, like I keep saying, we're going to run nitrous on this bad boy. And we are going to use this Edelbrock air gap intake manifold for the build. I really want to use that tunnel ram the problem is the tunnel ram is going to require more tuning it's going to be a little more finicky to get going and with a brand new engine build where we got to break in the rings we got to you know get the thing in the car and driving so that we can drive it out on the road a uh, single plane or well a single carburetor and the dual you know dual plane intake manifold is going to be the way to go it's a lot easier Plus, this thing was port matched to those cylinder heads, so it'd be a waste to not at least put them together, you know, at least once to see what happens. That being said, nitrous. Now, last time we ran nitrous, we ran this setup, uh, this plate rather. And as you can see, there was, you know, we discovered a problem. You can't just place it on here because you got big ledges in the way now, right? It's just not great. This is upside down, by the way, I just noticed. But how we solved that issue is we took a four-hole spacer and we ported it to make the transition right there. I'll flip this around so it's actually correct this time. How about that? Oh, geez, I can't. Where is... We made the transition nice and smooth using this uh, four-hole tapered spacer. Oh, four-hole spacer, and we we tapered it right to match the contours of all of this. And that worked really great. But we're going to change this up now because for that tunnel ram, I had gotten new nitrous plates. These nitrous plates with the open hole. See, it eliminates this crossbar that just impedes airflow. So, we're going with this now. But, as you can see, we still have a major problem. Uh, yeah, we're still big gaps all over the place. Actually, kind of worse now, to be honest. Well, if we take our four-hole four spacer that we cut down, add that to it, put this up on top, if I can... There we go. That solves a lot of the issue. Unfortunately, right here is still an issue. 
So I got it all marked out and I am going to clean this up so that, you know, it's not, don't have that overhang there. We're going to clean it all up, make it all nice so that this is going to work just fine. Uh, like that. And then I think I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to take these sharp edges and I'm going to roll this and make this rounded in here also and round it around here. Just blend the whole thing together, essentially. And then that is going to be our nitrous setup. We are getting extremely, extremely close to having an actual engine in the car. Uh, I'm getting pretty stoked about it myself because, frankly, fall is coming. It's August now, so pretty soon the leaves are going to start turning and whatnot. That's the best time to drive, I'm, just to be honest with you. That's when I... That, you know nice cool weather it's not like a hundred degrees outside or anything that's you know i want to get this thing ready so i can cruise until winter uh so that's the engine build i got a lot more carburetor stuff going on too i got uh that project xmc with the jb weld i got a few other things going on uh we're gonna be testing out a few more versions of that exact same thing so stay tuned for that because that's going to be really neat uh really neat uh yeah that's it for now uh just a just an update i mean the engine update right so far well then i'll catch you next time i guess that's all i gotta say uh